Are you worried that your parents are getting older and they may not have their affairs in order? Are you concerned that if something were to happen, you'd be scrambling? I'm Tamar Berman. And I'm Ozzy Martinez from Century 21 Inheritage. And we have five tips for you to help your aging parents get their affairs in order. We recommend you compile a binder or a file with um, all the documentations that you need. Um, recently, my dad just retired, and so he's in that planning stage of uh, figuring out his next step, um, the next stage of life, um, trying to figure out where he wants to invest his time, but also um, insurance information. Mm -hmm. He's trying to decipher and you know decide what, what he wants to time. do with yeah, that. So you're, this you're, is a great time to yes. go through all of these. You're changing some things up, so what a great time to just kind of put together all the information in one location. Yes. Number one, legal documents. Legal documents can contain your will, your estate plan. I know a lot of people you say estate plan and they're like, mm, we're not the Rockefellers here. We don't need an estate plan. Well, it, it can be something very, very simple. I know my own parents did their own will. And then when we went to our attorney to do health power of attorneys and financial powers of attorney, we just had to look it over and everything was in order. Powers of attorney, very important. essential. Essential. Very important. My parents got sick with COVID and they had to go into the hospital. Well, when they were in the hospital and we couldn't reach them, there were these other things that we needed to take care of. Yes, they have their own business. Yes, their own mm -hmm. business. So just as simple as paying a bill. We couldn't pay a bill because right. our, our name is not on the utility account and it wasn't on any of their financial accounts. So they wouldn't take our money. We couldn't even pay for that. Not to mention, if you want to get, you couldn't visit your parents because they had COVID and you want to call and get information regarding their health care so that you can assist in making decisions. You can't do that without no, a health power of attorney. The doctors won't talk to you. Exactly. So those two things are super, super important. Having a health power of attorney and a financial power of attorney. And I think if you have parents that are a little bit resistant to to talking about this thing, this type of thing, or to, I guess, almost giving up a little bit of control. control. The best way to, to talk to them about it is, you know, if for ever, any reason we had a crisis and you were unable to make these decisions or unable to just pay your bills for your business, right, right. we need to be able to step in and help you. So it's great if they tell you, you mm -hmm. know, what they have, but if they don't, at least have it somewhere. Yes, have, have it somewhere so that you yes. have access to where it. Where everybody knows have where, access to where it. everybody knows where it is. Number two, finances. A list of their accounts, names, numbers, and locations. Now it doesn't have to have the balance. No, yes. I know right. a lot of times I don't I, I don't always disclose to my kids, you know. Right. Um, and the same thing with my dads. So it doesn't have to have that. No. But many many of our parents are very private mm -hmm. people. So not wanting to share the details of each of those things, that is not a problem. But just a list of, of, of where they bank, where they do they have checking account, where are all these things located, just so that if you have to step in or you you know a crisis occurs you have this information in one central location. So important. Number three, insurance policies. If you have a, you can have a list of policies with the account numbers and the contact information, it's everything from your home insurance to your life insurance auto. to auto to long-term um, care, long-term care, medical oh, insurance. Oh my gosh! Everything. All that is very important information to have so that your children can advocate for you and and yes. have all this information if you are not able. And to. if your parents are not are incapacitated in any way. I'm telling you, you're sitting at the hospital or the doctor's office and they're asking you for this information. You have to be able to access this information. So I think again, you know, if our parents are a little bit uh, resistant or private, explaining why this is so important. Number four, medical information. 
the names of their physicians, their medications, any health conditions that they have. A lot of times, my parents don't tell me when they go to the doctor. No. I, I don't have, you know, a list of all their doctors. So you go from your primary to the specialist if they're seeing anybody. Mm -hmm. And same thing with medications. They're not telling me. So, but if, you know, it, it's important if they were able to place it on the list, yes. have it on the list so that if for some reason they can't speak for themselves, yes. that it's there and we can let the physicians know. And you can advocate for them. Yes. I mean, that's so important. If your if your parent is incapacitated in any way, you need to be able to advocate. But you cannot do that without all the necessary information, or at least you can't do it well. No. And um, and again, you're going to be sitting in that chair at the hospital, and they're going to be asking for this information. So if you could run home and grab that binder that has all that information, what a wonderful gift that is. Oh yes. Number five, end of life wishes and directives. No, here's the here's the to touch talk about it. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to talk about end of life wishes, but you know what? It's one of the best gifts that you can give your loved ones because you don't want to find yourself second guessing. No. Um, you know, yes, my my parents passed recently, and um, it was a crisis situation for both my parents and. Um, to know that we had already had the conversation and to know in my heart that um, what I was saying and the choices that my sister and I were making were the choices that our parents wanted, that gave us peace. That is, was, it, it took something huge off our plate that I, and, and, and even if you have siblings, maybe yes. if you haven't talked about this, now everybody can be disagreeing on what should be done. But when you're simply following your parents' plan or wishes, that is completely different and it takes the burden off oh our gosh, shoulders yes. as children. And I think this is an important thing to think about too, as far as ourselves. I mean, I'm a baby boomer, so you know, I've been caring for my parents for several years, but I'm also <laughs> at the stage where I should start to think about putting together my own binder and having that for my yeah. children. If you can do it at any, any age, I guess, if you have, children, um, you want to make sure that the people around you know what your wishes are. Um, so if you have it written down, awesome, that's wonderful because now nobody has to guess what you would have liked. Mm -hmm. and, and talking, and, and about, talking it. about it. Talking mm -hmm. about it because then it makes it, makes it feel a little bit more comfortable. Yes. You may realize that um, not everybody thinks the same. No, you know? There's no. different things that my sisters probably would want different than what I, I would want. But then want. when you hear it from your parents, it yes. makes it so much easier. And, and the way I, I, I segued into that with my parents was we just had a kind of a discussion and I could tell they weren't like piping right in. So I, I shared what I wanted and what my thoughts were about um, end of life and after end of life. And that, then they started talking about what they liked about that or what they didn't like about that and what they would prefer to that. And it, it was really, it was a, an awesome experience for her, my sister and I because when that crisis occurred, we were just following their directives. Yes. So that gave us a lot of peace. And that's what we want. Mm -hmm. So I hope, I hope this video helps. I, if you like it, please subscribe, comment below, share it with anybody that this video might be helpful for, and uh, give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.